The container ship jam in the port of LA is still ongoing, and as per latest info, there are now over a hundred ships at the Anchorage area waiting for their turn to enter the port. This was the topic in a previous episode, and a lot of those who watched it asked why these ships don't simply divert to the East Coast, more specifically, to Florida. This is in response to the statement that the governor of Florida made, which basically said that its ports have the capacity to handle the influx of container ships. When you start talking about supply chain inflation, you know, that's not something that's just going to affect a small segment. I mean, that hits very wide, uh, hits very hard. And so Florida's here, we've got capacity, and we also have incentive packages to make it worth your while to be able to bring your business through our ports. If that's the case, why aren't these container ships diverting to Florida? The short answer? Well, money, of course. But for the long answer, we have to first understand how container ships operate. First of all, container ships have a more or less fixed trade route. They are referred to as liners and they move like a pendulum. For example, most of the container ships that call on the port of LA usually just go back and forth, taking in cargo from China, Korea, Japan, and unloading them in LA. From there, they pick up a few loaded containers and a bunch of empties, which are then sent back to Asia. Wash, rinse, repeat. But now, the port congestion has caused massive delays, so over 100 ships are stuck at anchor waiting for their turn. Hence the suggestion that these stranded ships should divert to the East Coast, most notably Florida, where their ports have the capacity. Which brings us to the question, is this really a viable solution? Well, yes. If a particular ship gets delayed in the port of LA, sure, they can heave up their anchor and go to Florida or any other East Coast port. But that's going to incur additional expenses like fuel, charter party rates, Panama Canal fees, and after they unload the cargo in the East Coast, they will have to double back and go all the way back to their original trade route headed for China. Now, that's a highly possible option, but only for ships which can fit through the Panama Canal. These are the so-called Panamax and Neo-Panamax ships. In the previous episode, our topic was about Panama Canal toll fees, and in that video, I highlighted the fact that there is a size limit for ships to be able to go through the locks. Giant container ships like the Ever Given, for example, will not be able to go through the Panama Canal. If you're interested to learn more about it, click here to watch the video or click the link in the description. Anyway, as I was saying, for Panamax or Neo Panamax ships, this is a possible option, but of course, any ship movement will incur additional expenses. However, being stuck at anchor for days and days will also incur expenses for the ship. So the bottom line is which course of action will incur the least amount of expenses. Let's compare both scenarios and see for ourselves why the ships are choosing to wait in line rather than heading for the East Coast. Again, for the purpose of calculation, we'll use the details of a popular container ship, which is the same one we used in the Panama Canal video. Now, let's say the ship will travel from Los Angeles to Tampa in Florida. That's a distance of about 4,236 nautical miles. If the ship runs at 21 knots and consumes 75 metric tons of fuel per day, the voyage will take about 8 days and consume a total of 600 metric tons of fuel. Now, a ship this size is usually chartered for about 92,000 per day. So for 8 days, that will be $736,000. At the current market, the price of VLSFO, or very low sulfur fuel oil, which is the most common fuel that ships use nowadays, is around $600 per metric ton. So 600 tons of fuel will cost $360,000. Since the ship will pass through the Panama Canal, 
the toll fee for a vessel this size will be around $450,000. For more details on how to compute for the canal fees, again, check out this video. So, for a one-way trip from LA to Tampa, Florida, the estimated cost will be around $1.5 million. But that's just one way. Like I said earlier, after discharging the cargo, the ship will have to double back to return to her original trade route, which again will take another 8 days. Let's just assume that the fuel consumption is slightly lower because of the lighter load, so maybe around $336,000. Charter party remains the same at $736,000. Now, for the Panama Canal fees, since the ship will have fewer loaded containers, the toll fee could go down to around $320,000. So, the return trip will cost around $1.4 million. Now, add both trips, and we will have a total cost of around $2.9 million. That will be the additional cost of a Panamax container ship if it decides to divert from the port of LA and head to the port of Tampa in Florida. Now, that's just the cost of the seaborne logistics. Once the containers have been offloaded from the ship, there's the additional cost for the land-based transport since the cargo was originally destined for the west coast. Now, what will be the cost if the ships remain at anchor off the coast of Los Angeles and just wait for their turn? I've been tracking a few of the container ships in the LA Anchorage area, and from what I've seen so far, the ships stay there typically for about a week. The longest I've seen so far is 14 days. So let's just say the ships wait for a full 20 days before they enter the port. How much would it cost them then? When ships are anchored, the only machinery that burns fuel will be the generators and the boiler and they only consume a fraction of what the main engine burns. Also, when ships are within U.S. territorial waters, they are required to use LSMGO, low sulfur marine gas oil, which is slightly more expensive and at the current market costs around $680 per metric ton. Let's say that a container ship at anchor consumes around 8 metric tons of fuel per day. In reality, it's most likely going to be lower, but let's go crazy and call it 8 tons. So for 20 days, the ship will consume 160 tons of fuel, which will cost $108,800. 20 days of charter will be around $1.8 million. That brings us to a total of $1.948 million if the ship decides to stay and wait for its turn to go in. In conclusion, the cost difference will be around $990,000 US dollars. So even if we go to the extreme case that the ships have to stay at anchor for 20 days, they would still save around a million dollars as compared to diverting to the east coast. Again, this is an option only for the container ships that can fit through the Panama Canal. For the giant container ships, Diverting to the East Coast will never be a viable option. So, those are the reasons why the container ships stuck at the Anchorage area in LA are not rushing to go to the East Coast. Now, there were a few shipping companies that have planned ahead and modified their ships' trade routes to go directly to ports like Savannah and Houston, avoiding California altogether. This strategy will allow them to pick up a few more cargoes in other ports along the way, so as to maximize the voyage capacity. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and if you have more questions, feel free to comment below. If I find them interesting enough, I'll make a video about it. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for the next one.